What's going on, everybody? It is another it's another morning with Dow of the Day. I am here to usher you through some some of the Dao De Ching. The Dao De Ching is a great book for living a reasonable life. It translates to the canon of reason. I'm going to be sipping a little decaf while I'm talking with you this morning. Mm. And the canon of reason is all about giving us a solid foundation of which to live our lives from it's the you know it takes the physical like we are living in this physical realm and it takes the spiritual this is the the Tao, right the Tao is everything the Tao is in all things and it brings those things together so we can live in a reasonable way and i am <laughs> always open and excited to share the Tao with people. The Tao was a big part of my recovery. I have 20 years clean and sober, 21 years in December, on December 14th. And I'm very excited to uh, reach that milestone. Not that, I mean, 20 was great. I actually went to a meeting on 20 so I can get a coin, but, but um, I don't go to meetings anymore. Um, that was something that was part of my past and I had to leave the rooms and, and in, it, for for a number of reasons, one of the reasons was that it's all revolving around what do you what is it you're recovering from? Well, defining myself today by my past isn't something that I wanted to do, and I have people in my life today that continue to remind me of that. And the Tao is another thing that reminds me of that, and I would like to share that with you. If you want to come on, to uh, if you want to join me, if you want to press that little microphone, that little purple microphone, and join me up here, uh, we can call it a stage, we can call it whatever, but it's going to be you and I talking in a very personal way that uh, is open to other people uh, experiencing as well. So if you want to come up, uh, pick a number between 1 and 81. We'll go through your DAO for today, and we'll, it will explore it line by line. Um, I hope I, I think I got everything set up for 15 minutes, and that's usually a great way. It's a great amount of time to be able to just, you know, have a little introduction, you know, build a little rapport, as they say in sales. And then, um, and then we can... Um, and then we can get right down, right down to your DAO, because uh, your DAO is, and, and everyone that listens to it can learn from it. I'm going to learn from it. It's not, it's not, you know, it's like there is something there for you because you've picked it. But everybody that's listening, we we get something out of it as well. So why don't you come up? Give me a number between one and eighty-one. I'll pick my DAO of the day first, and we'll we'll, we'll start there. I'm looking at these numbers. And I'm trying to figure out what I want to pick. Hmm. You know, all of the numbers I'm seeing, I'm, I, I want to make sure that I'm not just picking a number that I have, uh, that I've picked before, or someone else picked, and, and it doesn't matter really, but, uh, you know, those those sorts of ideas are in my head. I'm going with 11, even though I think I have picked it soon. Oh, no, here we go. 11. I don't think I've read this on, on this app. We join spokes together in a wheel, but it is the center hole that makes the wagon move. We shape clay into a pot, but it is the emptiness inside that holds whatever we want. We hammer wood for a house, but it is the inner space that makes it livable. We work with being, but non-being is what we use. You know, this, this is interesting because this has been a difficult one for me for a long time. I mean, I understand the concept here, right? Like it is in the framework we embrace a thing. And that thing that we're embracing and the thing that we're using is actually the emptiness. It's actually the space of that is created, right? The, the space that is separated out by the thing, right? Like if you make clay into a pot, that clay, like the, the reason that the pot is helpful isn't isn't the clay. The clay is using up space. It is the space that the clay allows you to use. So it is in space that we want to, we, we want to experience these things. And I'm going to, I'm going to take you back to a time when I was living. It's funny, this came up recently. So I'm, I'm, let's just say I'm in a new relationship and I want to, and I want this to kind of relate to that because in my mind there is some things that that this relates to so like in relationship where is the space and what are we creating it's not it's not in the expectation right it's not it's not in all of the all of the things 
in that that make a relationship it is the space within there that i can exist as an individual right and that that my partner be able to exist as an individual and 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 all of that space is really important for us to be ourselves not to not for it it is not the relationship that is the important thing the relationship allows space for me to be a better me and them to be a better them and that's beautiful, right? Like now this, this whole verse is starting to make a little more sense to me. But I want to take you to a time. I want to, I want to take you back. I want to take you back to a time when I was uh, strung out. I'm going to take you back to a time when I was living on the street in New York. And as I just told this to someone, I don't know, yesterday or the day before. Um, and and it's, this, it's this third part of this, um, the third part of this chapter 11 or whatnot. We hammer wood for a house, but it is the inner space that makes it livable. Again, just sipping on my decaf, just sipping on my decaf. Um, so we hammer wood in for a house, but it is the inner space that makes it livable. So when I was on the street, I was on the street for, you know, like I was, I was, I was in and out of spaces, let's say for a month uh, when I was in New York back in, I don't know, it was probably like 93, 95. I, I, I can't recall, um, but around then, you know, it was, it was in the nineties, mid to late, mid, mid nineties. Let's just say mid nineties. Um, I was, so I was staying, I was staying in the hell's kitchen area. It was really close to, um, I mean, in, in my recollection, it was close to like Times square. And I would kind of like, kind of dip in and out of that area. And then like, kind of just wander around different areas. I didn't know too much about, uh, New York at the time. I still don't. Um, but uh, after being like without walls for four four days, I was I, I felt myself on the verge on the verge of, of of going crazy, on the verge of losing my mind. Um, and so I got this room, and and that room for one night, like changed, change was able to change everything, right and. And in that, this verse makes so much sense to me in, in, in the, we hammer wood for a house, but it is the inner space that makes me, makes it livable. Because when I was in that space, I realized that there was nothing different except the walls. And, and it was that at that moment that I realized what four walls meant, what four walls gave us, what four walls allows us to do now say what you want about right angles and straight lines and all of those things like um whether you have that or not like having a space in which you can be i don't care how small actually small is probably better because if you like you know, like if you're in a huge house you're still in space Right. But to encapsulate that. And, you know, I like I like living not in a box. I, you can't you can't hold me down to live in a box or, or to box my personality. Like, I don't want to be in a box. Right. But. When you're in a box. You can see the edges. And if you have ever lived ungrounded, you know, either homeless or in a time in your life that was absolutely, you know, you were lost. And so all you had around you was space and all of it was just too much. And that's it, like overwhelm, overwhelm teach you a lot. You know, like being out in space is gonna teach you a lot because you can learn so much about who you are because there is nothing but space when you're in the middle of space. and so. You know, when I got into that room, I looked around and I was finally able to sleep. I was finally able to just let my guard down. I was finally able to see who I was. And in that room, you know, like it didn't have a bathroom. It was a shared bathroom, but there was a sink and a bed and a mirror, right? A mirror above the sink. And like, I was able to look into the mirror. And I was able to look into my eyes and I can be like, what the fuck, right? Like, what are you doing? Who are you? What, what is this? 
but it was in like I was able to utilize space. I was able to utilize the space that was that was held in those walls. Those walls were sacred to me at that moment. But I also realized that they were the only thing that separated me from everything that I was running from. Right? Everything that 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 those previous four days being strung out and being on the street and like not having privacy, not having space, not having, I mean, I had space, but I didn't have, I didn't have any space carved out. I mean, I found little places to tuck away, but I was always, you know, it always felt like I was being followed. It always felt like I was being seen. It always felt like, I, but not so like watched maybe better, better, better word than seen. You know, so we join spokes together in a wheel, but it is the center hole that makes the wagon move. You know, there are times where, you know, like I remember as a kid when I would, when I would draw like bubble letters and things, right? Like I would, I would draw these things and, and I would want to connect them, right? Like it was like early, it's like in the eighties. So graffiti was, it was all over, right? It was on the trains, it was on the, you know, it was on the street everywhere. And so I would, you know, and I, and, and, and back when, Back in the nineties, I was, uh, you know, I was, you know, in the, the late eighties, early nineties, I was a writer. So like I had, you know, like I would go and I would, I would tag Opie everywhere. O-P-E-Y. Um, and, and, and in doing that, like a creative aspect of, you know, like some of the things that I would do and I didn't do it for very long. I wasn't really part of a crew. I mean, I knew a lot of people from J4F and, and a couple other, a couple other, you know, writing crews here in Chicago, but, um, but it was really, uh, it was really fun to do that. And I did that in New York, right? So I tagged out in New York. I was doing some things when I was out there, but, uh, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but, um, but it's the space, right? Like, like when I was out there, like I tried to embrace all of the space and I had my space and I, and I put my name on shit and I did that kind of thing. And I was doing that because I needed space. I wanted to take up space, but I wanted to do it quietly because I couldn't face me. I couldn't face taking up that space. And as soon as I was able to box the space in and realize that beyond that wall, beyond that thin fucking wall, was everything that I came here to be away from. And so this, this, this third line, this third stanza, we hammer wood for a house, but it is the inner space that makes it livable. Like when I read that, not, not today, I mean, I read this many, many years ago, but I, I always think of that time when I didn't, didn't have walls and what walls really, really mean when you're lost. Now I live a lot more ungrounded today than I did back then. You know, I needed grounding then because I was so ungrounded, but now I, I welcome the ungrounded nature of just living. Um, and, and I, and I really enjoy kind of not necessarily knowing where I'm going. Um, but, but steering in a direction that I want, that I believe I want to go. So, um, so yeah, we have to, what this, what, what, what I interpret this verse to be talking about, it's like, you know, when I was on the street, I was being, I was, you know, like we work with being right. Like you work with doing, you work with the space, you work with all the stuff, you work with all the manifestation, but, but it's non-being is what we use, right? When, when I went to that room and I was just like able to be there without without anything, without having to put my name on anything, without having to fucking like protect myself, without having to be afraid, without having to be tough, without having to be what I felt like I needed to be, I was immediately embraced by non-being, right? And, and, and of course that non-being, the understanding of that non-being, the feeling of that non-being is going to be different than it is today for me. But that's one of the most important things for me to be able to embrace, right? Is the non-being is, and, and when I can, when I can like live my life as if I just stepped into an empty space, right? Like, 
like that tiny room that I was in, right, with the bed and the sink and the mirror, like, that's it. Like, it's kind of like 2001. I don't know if you guys, I mean, it's an older movie. <laughs> so I don't know how many of you have seen this movie. But there's a point where a man is in a white room and it's like expansive. It's enormous, right? It's like it's like all of space and time. And, and that, you know, like that movie really kind of like breaks down the the um the concept and the and the and the construct of time and space and and when you're in a space where you can not be all of the identity that you have put on yourself all of the identity that you believe you are and you present it is it is stunning how open the space is and in that space, you can just be. Now, I'd be really interested to hear anybody out there that would that that has a time in their life, like found this space of non-being. I'm going through the Tao for anybody that recently joined. Um, I'm going through the Tao uh, chapter eleven uh, because that was my number today. If you have a number that's coming to you between one and eighty-one. I would love for you to join me and uh, give me that number and we'll go through the DAO and we'll talk about what, what comes up for you and, and why is that your DAO for today? The numbers, you know, these are magical things. I was on an interview yesterday for a podcast and we went through two, we did like an hour conversation or a half hour conversation. And then I asked her for a number. She wanted to pick two different numbers. We read them both and they both addressed the things that we had talked about and they were personal for both of us. And that's the thing. There is magic here. There's so much magic in the Tao, and I want you to be able to experience that magic. So if you just come on, hit that little, hit that purple like microphone button and join me and we'll, uh, and we'll take your Tao for the day. I'm going to go ahead and read this one again. Um, oh, I do have somebody. Um, uh, or actually, now that I have somebody, we'll, 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 we'll go with that. And we're doing a countdown. Here we are. Hello. Hello, Martin. How are you? I'm... Never mind me. Uh, welcome to no. Wisdom. You're breaking up a bit. What's your name, boss? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, I'm the guy in the hat in Wisdom. I'm sorry, in uh, Clubhouse. So, are you from Clubhouse? No, I'm not from Clubhouse. I'm from Chicago. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm just Nas. <laughs> How you doing? You got a number from you got, yeah, no. you got a number from one to eighty-one. Uh, no, no. I, I, dude, I, I'm just like, I'm a little depleted. So I just wanted to just, I, I, I drop, I, I hop on everybody's stage to welcome the wisdom, and usually okay. I'd be a lot more supportive than this. But I, I'm just. What's going on? When when I pour when I so me doing what I'm doing here. Um. So, you know, the river, right? So, for me, flow state is like a lazy river, and you can just be protected in your own raft, and go through flow, and get what you need. You know, by just simply reaching out. <clears throat> but the thing about the Lazy River is that sometimes people jump out of the raft and they they stir up waters, right? So they create turbulence and there's no way you can see it coming because you're just enjoying the scenery as you put, proceed around the river. So so that's 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 where I am. I'm just like kind of trying to figure out this. How to navigate this turbulent spot? Do I pull that person out of the river and bring them into my raft at risk of sinking us both? Um, you know, so it, it's a really you know, like when you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. This is perfect. This really is actually really perfect. To um, pick the lesson yeah. to leave, which you know, which is the word, you know. Mm -hmm. And that would be the last of two evils. It's that's a really, really hard spot to figure out because. 
Well, you know, um, you're still yeah. on a lazy river, so it's, you know, all right. like it's all, all right. right. <laughs> you want a number? Uh, yeah, I want a number. Let's go with eighty. Oh, you said eight, between one and eighty-one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so since I can pick eighty-three, between eleven and three, you choose between which one uh, and you three? want to work on. Yeah. All right. Okay, I picked six just because it's between eleven and three. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, no, no. Of those numbers. Oh, three between three like, and right? eleven. Because, All right, well, we'll go to three. It's the first yeah, one you said. Because, no, yeah, no, November third is is a, is a big deal for me. Well, I just read eleven, so we'll do three. Okay, sure. All right. If you overesteem great men, people become powerless. So this is kind of what you're talking about, right? Like, like you got someone in your lazy river water, and if you overesteem them, meaning you 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 put yourself at risk, you become powerless. If you overvalue possessions, people begin to steal. The master leads by emptying people's minds and filling their cores, by weakening their ambition and toughening their resolve. He helps people lose everything. They know everything they desire and they know everything they desire and creates confusion. Oh, blah, 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 blah. He helps people lose everything they know, everything they desire and creates confusion in those who think they know, who think that they know. Sorry, I'm reading this poorly. Practice not. Wow, doing. that's exactly where I'm at. Yes. Uh, Practice not doing and everything will fall into place. The universe could have been more. Yeah, welcome to the Tao, my friend. Welcome to the Tao. Okay, so the trouble the the trouble with that, right? So Yeah. Oh my god. The trouble is that we all have problems with I wanna pull the eject button and land in Madagascar. Oh, oh, okay. But, you know, like... Yeah, but what, so the, but right now, the problem is that it's not me who, who has the problem receiving. It's the other person, right? The other person... There is no other person. Said, like, literally out of the mouth that they don't want my help. Right? Yeah, that, that, so, but they don't. They 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 are so not required to accept of that right now. Okay, I appreciate your your metaphysicalness, but we're right <laughs> now. I, 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 the situation is that in that problem, that's the predicament. Right, so when you see somebody drowning in the river, right, you know that if you pull them. So I, you, I, I think you might have a weak connection because uh, I can't you understand might, your breaking you up quite a bit. You may that we both might float, right? But and perception is shitty. All right, well, I'm sure you're going to be around for for a bit. You know, I'm going to jump yeah. down and jump then down, I'll come back. back you know, when I'm better reception. Uh, okay, well, I hope uh, to get that back because it seemed like it seemed very. It seemed like the number three that I read is going to really uh, resonate. Um, although, you know, I may want to kind of chime in that like it doesn't seem as if uh, that is what he wants, right? Like, I, I will, I will, I will, I will step to that. It seems more that uh playing in this uh in this space of 
being a victim to someone else's stuff is more is, is more profitable at the moment for uh, for this. And we'll see we'll see if we can get a better connection and get to the bottom of that because there's no way um, that uh, that uh, needs to proceed. All right, we back. Yeah. We so <clears throat> yes, here we are. Not, not the connection is hardly better, but I just wanted to come up and say that no. I, I do appreciate it. I do want it. Number three is going to work for me. I just need to unpack it. Yeah, um, let's unpack and I, it. And, I, and I'm not I'm not victimized by the situation. Beautiful. I'm just like in this quandary between damned if I do, damned if I don't, which is the 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 less dangerous road. So and, so I'm I'm, yeah. I'm I'm in listening mode. Let me yeah, just let's, get to Yeah, let's 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 unpack this. If you overesteem great men, people become powerless. So what, who who do you feel like you're over esteeming in this in this situation? The person in the river. Beautiful, great. So if you over esteem this person, what happens? You become powerless. It's a great way to start. Great way to start because at least you know. In so I have I have I'm I got twenty years clean and sober. You know, like I work in the you know I work in the field of recovery for uh, addiction as well as other things. And so when we start talking about powerless, you know, I, I started in the rooms of AA. I didn't finish there, but um, but you know, like that first step is like, hey, you are powerless. And then so admitting that is a big sort of for sort of thing because if you're powerless, damned if you do and damned if you don't, don't become a question. It's just like, well, you are here, and that is, and you're powerless to to the actions that are, are, are taking place. If you overvalue possessions, people begin to steal. In this situation, what is the possession? Uh, so the possession is <clears throat> having my support. What is your possession? My possession? Mm-hmm. My possession is having a a, a, a solid family unit. Okay. So, as we overvalue, like, your support, as we overvalue that, um, that solid family unit, what is getting stolen? My mental health. And who's stealing that? The person in the river. How? Because they fail to recognize that by jumping into the river, right, that was their choice. I told them, don't jump into the river, right? And it's not that I told them, don't jump. I, I, I made their, their raft so comfortable and safe that by every single metric that I'm aware of, there should have been no reason for them to fall out of the raft, jump out of the raft. Right, right, right. And so the, here we the see the raft that was you... fortified so that. Well, that's the right. thing. Maybe I didn't fortify the raft that it couldn't get a hole, and and I think maybe that's what happened. And right? so, so here we start seeing that the the possession that is being overvalued is all that you've done. All of this fortifying of someone else's raft. You know, if you go in and, and like decorate someone's boat that doesn't want it decorated, ah, uh, you know, and you're right because I identified this long before we had this conversation that by me inflating their self confidence in the beginning to help them to navigate this new space, I did not do them any favors. No. So, so I so knowing that, right? I'm I'm trying to to damage control. And I don't know how. That's right, because you've, you've dug yourself a hole. So what happened is, I'm going to go back through this line. If you overvalue possessions, the possession being like your help, you know, like, like and what you stole from your partner, if, if, if I'm going to venture to say that it's your partner, because it seems that way, if, what you stole from your partner is their independence. Yeah. What you stole from your partner is their ability to decorate and fortify the raft as they needed to. So the master, the person who can, the person who can get out of this, and this is you, right? Like you are the master of this. Like you've put yourself in a position. Now you got to fix it. So the master, well, by empty, so, 
Yeah, no, I, I feel you, right? Okay. What's that? I'm listening. I said, I, I, I hear you and I agree with you. <laughs> and I'll t- I just want to, just so we can, oh, please. because we have a timer, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So, so I did that. You know, I threw her in the deep end and let her learn now on her own, right? But she didn't sign up to be a single mom. And I, ex- and, and, and I internalized that and I started to play nice again, right? I think, I think the season of, of, you know, like, for the lack of a better word, punishment, right? I, I think it's done. You know, you can, you can only tell the kid to, to sit in the corner for so long, right? So, right? So I, I think that, you know, the season of that was finished and, and I let it go and everything was, was beautiful. And, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, I don't know, a mood swing, whatever, right? You know, she ended up in the water. Right. Yeah. And and so now I've gone back to that old that same, you know, strategy that I used before where, OK, this is I, I can't help you. One hand doesn't clap. Right. So so now I am just. Essentially avoiding her. Right. Like I kiss the baby, you know, I hug yeah. up the baby whenever I can. And. And I can't be having an argument about nothing because it upsets my energy, right? So I right. just now, until until she texts me, what is this all about? So I can read it and internalize it and we can talk about it. If I don't right. know what I'm talking about, then, you know, it's a fruitless conversation. It's like a negative feedback loop, right? So, so... So, all right, so I, I'm just, you know, avoiding her, including, like, she was taking baby to an appointment this morning, right? And I j- normally I would load the baby up in the car, and, you know, and especially now that it's cold, you know, like, two hands, you know, clap, right? So, and, and, and I, I enjoy, you know, being present like that. <clears throat> but, but she... You know, like I'm, I'm so upset. Not with, not at her, or anything like that. I'm just like, it's flush. Like, it just gets my waters boiling. The fact that I even have to be having this conversation with you right now. You know, like I, I'm a little too old, a little too, you know, experienced to be in this problem. But my experience has not let you know, like. Because I don't, I hate repeating yesterday. Yeah, and it feels like that that's happening a lot with you. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the sense that this isn't the first time this sort of thing has happened. Maybe this specific thing, but, yeah. but my no, guess it's, it's, is... It's, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's like the same show. It's like the same episode. It's just, right. you know, like... Season different one, characters, season two, season different three. fucking, like... Yeah. What, um... Why... Why is she doing this? Like in your okay, mind? Right. No, no, no. I, I, okay. So it's like, it's like this, right? So I'm sure if you have you ever heard the term "mommy brains" or "mommy no. brain"? All right. So no. I mean, I so can imagine now, what it is. Yeah. So, so I mean, I decided. Okay, never mind the colloquial name. Let me give this a a, a more scientific name that people might get the context, right? So I'm now calling it. Postpartum psychosis. So, okay. yeah, yeah, that makes right? sense to me. <laughs> right. So, and the reason why someone, you know, this happens to someone, a number of factors. One, they could. I think he got a phone call. I heard a couple beeps, and then he went mute. Um, I'm going to continue going through this this DAO until he comes back. He's got five and a, he's got almost six minutes left. I'm going to give him that timer um, and we're going to move on. Um, the master leads by emptying people's minds and filling their cores. And so um, what that means is like, you know, like if you fill someone's core, if you feed them, if you give them nourishment, if you give them something and you, you, you clear their mind, they can allow their mind to be healthy. Right. That's what like filling your core, filling, filling, filling something that has value. Oh, you're back. Hello. Hello. All right. So, yeah. Your, your, so your, same your episode, connection different just keeps season. getting better, by the way. That's wonderful. 
<laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, same episode, different season. Right. And what is this episode? Postpartum psychosis. So, how does someone end up in postpartum psychosis? A, they're, pre, they're genetically predisposed to postpartum blues. Right. It's a thing. Right. So, so that, that could be happening. Right. But even if that's not happening, the 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 female the the child bearer has gone through physiological changes to get to the point of delivery uh-huh. you know including all kinds of you know like metaphysical you know like uh, physio- physiological yeah. changes yeah. hormonal changes emotional changes right so all that already happened now post delivery what's happening again is the body. So in addition to all that just happened, now the body is trying to put itself back together, literally and metaphysically, right? So the, the, the hips are closing in the blah, 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 you know, all these things are happening. Right. And the, now a new set of hormones because now she has to produce milk, right? Something that she never did before. So you have this new experience of, being responsible for our life. Now your body is producing the, the life giving sustenance for that life. You, you're, you're hearing sounds that you never heard before. You're, you're, you're smelling things you never smelled before. You know, all of these, all of these new, you know, external, you know, like observational things, plus the internal, you know, physiological things, plus the mental things. And this hasn't had anything to do with, you know, where the bill is going to get paid, right? So, so anyone, you know, so then, right, so that's, that, and that's baseline, right? Then you can throw into there things like immigration. Things can I ask like, you a question? Are you a little brother? Yep. Okay, continue. Uh, by, by, with two sisters, eight and nine yeah. years older than me. Okay. Go on, continue. Right, so... Right, so you have all these, you know, external factors on top of that, right? So it doesn't take a lot to figure out how come somebody is experiencing postpartum psychosis. No. Right, so if you think, did you ever see the Mothers Against Drunk Driving commercial where they, they put these empty beer glasses, line them up, and, and say, like, this is, you know, how things look, you know, after one beer, after two beers, right? And you're looking through all these, like, dirty, you know, beer glasses. Yeah. Right, so the, your your vision keeps on getting more, more obscure. obscure. Right, so yeah. if, if you think of all of those factors, right, as as a pair of clear glasses but with a different tint, right? After yeah. putting on all those different glasses, the color that you're going to see the world is something incomprehensible to anyone not wearing any glasses at all. Right, so I understand that how she's seeing the world right now is something that's not going to make sense to me. Right, I understand that. Right, and and I want to approach her. Like I, I want to just like let go of this character that that I, you know, like when shit happens, you got to put on a suit of armor in order not only to protect yourself from the things that are coming. But the armor itself is going to lend a support that that you can still stand upright if you don't have the energy to stand upright. Does that make sense? You can yeah. still you can still present to the outside world how you want to look, even if you don't feel that way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Right. So so that's where I am. I'm right now. You know, I I'm the not even the the knight in shiny armor. <clears throat> I'm just like the 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 tin man in the in the garden that is just there all rusty, but he's standing up. The crows are not scared. They're just shitting on him. But, you know, but there's, there's an upright standing character over there standing up. Right. Even though yeah. inside I am slumped to like the, the only thing that's holding me up is the rust. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. So, you know, this Dow and, your time's going to run out while I continue reading this, but but this DAO is, is very very significant for you. If you want if you want a link to this, or if you want me to copy and paste this to you so you can have it, just shoot me a message on Instagram. Um, Are you or oh, you're not in Clubhouse, sir? Eh? I'm I'm in Clubhouse. I'm just not active there. Oh yeah, well if you can just send me on the back channel, 
right? Okay. So I'm at NASCOM. I'm the guy in the hat, you know, just to cross okay, reference. Cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you a message on, 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 on Clubhouse with Thank this. You. But I'm going to yeah, go ahead yeah. and read this, and you just Thank stick you. around for a bit while yeah, I I'm read listening. it, because I want to go through it, and I want, and I'm, I'm hoping that this will be, this will be yeah, a little so bit of a. He'll be there. We're good. If you overesteem great men, people become powerless. In your situation, we've already expressed that. If you overvalue possessions, we talked about that. People begin to steal, right? And actually, like, you know, like as we said, like you were stealing this person's ability to be where they are. And yes, you're right. Postpartum stuff is is a big deal. But we always have to look at ourselves. You know, we are the common denominator of the series that you continue to um, that you continue living in, right? The series. One of the common denominators, like I said, you, right? For you, they are experiencing something, and it might not be a series. They may be experiencing something brand new, and it is difficult. You know, I knew someone who had, um, uh, 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 I believe, I don't know if they they had heart surgery. And after their heart surgery, they went nutto uh, and their partner had to be kind of calm while they regained their ability to be, be themselves again. Um, that's not your responsibility. I mean, you have a child, you have a responsibility to the child. You don't necessarily have to have a responsibility to the relationship, but as you see fit. The master leads by emptying their minds and filling their cores, right? The, the master leads by emptying people's minds and filling their cores. You know, for you, like being able to not think and know that, you know, you're filled, you're fulfilled. Like that's where you are going to find your strength. You know, emptying your mind, your mind right now is full. It is full of so much stuff. And most of that is probably your perception. And yes, you can, you can talk about science. You can talk about all of these wonderful things that, um, that are around you. Allison is going to join me and I'm just going to finish reading this one. Uh, by weakening their ambition and toughening their resolve, he helps people lose everything. They know everything they desire and create confusion in those who think that they know. Practice not doing and everything will fall into place. Allison, welcome. How are you? I'm good. I was looking for a reading good. of a, my, my Tao. I want to pick a number. Yeah. I want, I want you to, Allison. Long time listener, uh, multi time caller, love it. Bring me, <laughs> bring me somewhere. Okay, how about we go in the seventies? Seventy two. Seventy two. That's funny. I was looking at twenty two when you said mm. that, and, I was, and then you said seventies, and then you said seventy two, and so like the twos, really, we're 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 here together. Mm. Oh, when they lose their sense of awe, people turn to religion. When they no longer trust themselves, they begin to depend on authority. Therefore, the master, the, the master, there's my Midwest. Therefore, the master steps back so that people won't be confused. He teaches without teaching so that people will have nothing to learn. That relates very much to the guy I was talking to earlier, um, you know, with this, this idea of like, you, you have nothing to learn. Um, so, so, uh, initial thoughts before we go into a line by line. It's always, it's always applicable to the momentum of something that I have been thinking about. So let's go through a line by line. Yeah. Do you want to share what you've been going through? Oh, just, it, well, just interesting that like in terms of authority, mm -hmm. I, you know, inter I did a, um, a call with Ruthie who I met on wisdom and we talked about how, you know, there's, there's, she talks about cult coaching and how people get sort of, they drink the Kool-Aid and they go into these coaching programs looking for the authority figure to be the one that makes the changes versus, you know, mm. recognizing that they are in and of themselves, the change they seek to be. So. Oh, I love that. Yes. That is, that is like all of my recover yourself work always tries to just put that power in you because like if you're looking to me or if you're looking to someone else, you're looking in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So when they lose their sense of awe, people turn to religion. Thoughts? When they lose their sense of awe. So I guess when they lose the magical aspect, they turn towards the authority of, you of know, what religion provides. Of Yeah, when they, right. they, they think religion is the thing that, 
versus spirituality, in my opinion, they're two different things. Right. But in order to have spirituality, what do you need? You need a sense of self. (laughs) A sense of a a sense of being in awe of that which you are surrounded by, which is you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. A sense of awe of that. I am connected to this beautiful landscape. I am connected to this beautiful creation. I am that sunset, right? Like, like this sense Mm -hmm. of awe, when you have that in your body, when you have that in your, in your person, there is no need to be like, let's pray to God. Right. Like there's there's absolutely no need for that. Like what a silly thing to do when you have a sense of awe. Right. It makes total sense. I love that. <clears throat> when they no longer trust themselves, they begin to, append, to depend upon authority. This right now, with all of the stuff that's going on in the news in terms of like the, the, the insurrection and politics and everything else and, and, you know, and, and COVID and everything, what a beautiful line this is, right? When they no longer trust themselves, they begin to depend upon authority. Well, even if you if you look at it in, in a more microscopic way, a macro or micro versus macro, it's like, right. you know, whenever we lose a sense of self, we look towards other, whether that's parent or friend or partner, or, partner. Teacher or coach. Yeah. Right. Tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah. I'm going to lean on you for the answer. Mm hmm. Yeah, Google. parents do this to kids all the time. Like you gotta let them, you gotta let them develop their own sense of autonomy and who they are, and make their. And it's really, really hard for parents to do that with kids. Right, because yeah, and when I talk, you know, I mean, so for anybody listening, I have twenty years clean and sober, and a large aspect of what I talk is living under the influence. And I always say, like, as soon as you're born, you learn to live under the influence of your parents. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's okay. Like your parents can't not have you live under the influence because you have no frame of reference. So you will live under the influence of your parents. The thing is, is are your parents going to step back enough to allow you to recognize that, that some of your thoughts are not your own? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, it could be a spousal influence too, even – Oh, no, no. everywhere, everywhere across the book. Like I say, you live under the influence of your parents, your peers, your teachers, your bosses, your partners, your, you know, the culture that you live in. You live under the influence of the economic system. You live under the influence of the, you know, the food industry because we're advertised to at such a degree. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I look at even like I even, you know, question, well, you know, when I talk about things like the Tao, I'm like, am I? Am I thinking through the tower or am I thinking through this on my own? That's why I want to go through these line by line and be like, well, what are your thoughts? Because those are your thoughts, you know, and the person that I had on before you, he was living under the influence of all sorts of stuff, right? And, and in order for him to have his own thoughts, he's going to have to face that, you know, he's going to have to face the fact that. You know, he's looking to an authority. He's looking, he's looking to find the right answer when there is no right answer. There's your answer. Mm -hmm. Therefore the master steps back so people won't be confused. Yeah. I love that. (laughs) Like the true master. Yes. I am a parent for your children. (laughs) Like, how can you step back so they won't be confused by that? What a beautiful way to, uh, sorry, I'm just getting excited. This is so good. It is so good. And I recognized the, uh, the influence of authority back when they were little and I took steps to step away. Like when they, by the time they were in fourth grade, I said, you are responsible for everything in regards to your education. You need to, you need to do your homework. I'm not going to ask you, like if you want a relationship with information and education you need to develop that on your own beautiful and now they thought you know by the time they got to be in middle school they thought it was odd that other parents would ask their friends like or or set a time for them to do their homework or ask them even ask them about the homework they're like that's so weird yeah why why do you need that you know when i was a kid and i've talked about this a couple of times when i was a kid i always got upset when people asked like is this going to be on the test you know, it's like, just fucking learn it. Like, why do you care if it's going to be on the test? Like, if you learn it, 
if it's on the test, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's very similar to this because it's like that idea of like controlling something versus just allowing that thing to be there, right? And by stepping back and telling and, – and I want to say for anyone listening, like when Allison says this, I want everybody to understand. I mean – and I only know Allison through wisdom, um, but I'm taking a guess that you support your children – you just don't tell them what to do. Like you're there as an active mother, right? You're of there course. supporting them completely in their choices and helping them make good choices and guiding them through all this. But you're of just course. not, you're not setting the time and saying, and checking their homework. If they come to you and say, Hey, can you look at this? Can we talk about this? You are open and you are there. That is their responsibility to ask for help. Yes, and that's what absolutely. you, that's what, that is what you are offering your children. You're not offering them for you to just take it off the plate. Actually, it's a, it's a bigger thing for you because now you have to be present when they are ready for you. You don't just yeah, I mean, on the side. Yes. I always say, you know, if there's something you need, let me know. Even when I read papers, I'm like, what am I reading for? What do you need from me? Yes. Do you just, do you need me to search for specific things? Do you need my opinion? Like, what do you need from me so I can give it to you in the way that you need it? Yes. And that, that is a master move here, right? Therefore the master steps back so people won't be confused. You know exactly what you need here. You have, you now have a frame of reference and I am a support. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want them to know they have their own inner guidance and their inner guidance is leading them down the path of least resistance for them. And my opinion is my opinion, but my opinion is not their inner guidance. Their inner guidance right. is the thing they need to lean on that provides everything that they need. Yeah. That's so beautiful. And I'm so grateful for you to be raising your children in that way because we need more and more people, um, not only like you that are parenting in this great way, but also people that are going to be like your children because that is, that, that is like you're giving them respect. And so many people look at children as not, not, not something that they have to respect. And that's something. Well, that's one of my decisions was not to parent out of fear. I remember when I was, they were yeah. really little and they were getting sick a lot. And I said, I cannot make decisions out of fear. I just, I can't. It's, it's painful for me. It's painful for them. It's right. chaotic. It's just, I just need to find another way. And that's how I found the way. <laughs> I think it's for beautiful. Me. Yeah. So he teaches this, the last line, he teaches without teaching so that people will have nothing to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To me, that just means like, as long as I am in alignment with me, my example allows them to be in alignment with them, which isn't teaching anything, which is just allowing. Right. And there's nothing there for them to learn. Nope. There's nothing, there's no lesson for them to learn. They will learn what they learn, but there is no thing for them to learn. Like they, they will, they will gather information. They will gather experience. They will gather insight, but there is nothing to learn. No, because all that stuff is automatic in the process of being a non-physical consciousness focused here. Like right. you can't not gather information and get new perspectives and have new experiences. That's an automatic function of the reality yeah. we live in. But yeah, yeah, I mean, there's lesson often is a punitive word for most people to learn that lesson. Right. You know, it's interesting. I mean, as, as, as I mentioned already, I, I do a lot in the recovery sort of community and, and, you know, I'm an, I'm a, I'm a, a, a harm reductionist. And so by being a harm reductionist, like I, I look at the drug war as a war on sending a message, right? Sending a lesson. And the idea being, look at all of these addicts, look at all of these people dying and look at all of these people hurting and homeless and all of this stuff. And we're just going to continue to allow them to exist so we can train the next generation about how bad drugs are right? This is a lesson, right? They're, the entire war on drugs is about like, look, you're going to prison, you're going to be homeless, you're going to have all of these things that are, you know, like bad in your life and, and you don't want that. And so you're going to not do drugs. Well, it hasn't worked and it has caused harm to all of those people that are struggling with addiction and struggling with um, substance abuse and other things like that. And that's something that, you know, like if uh, our 
if we followed the research, if we looked inside of ourselves, we would not run our, you know, huge public policy. We would not, we would not utilize public policy to teach a lesson because it's, it's harmful. Well, I mean, that's, it's not even what it's about. It's about pain and it's about pain avoidance. That's why people do drugs. It's about running away from it. So not, it's not like asking them why are you like that doesn't, is, is a stupid question. It's what yeah. happened to you and how can we heal your pain? Right. Absolutely. And that's, and you know, like when we look at this whole thing, you know, we have to go back to the beginning because we say when we lose the sense of awe, people turn to religion. When they no longer trust themselves, they begin to depend upon authority. And then it goes into this other aspect of stepping back. We don't want people to turn to religion or turn to authority because religion is an authority, you know, mm-hmm. and if you, if you don't trust yourself and you don't have a sense of awe and that's what we're here doing, Alice and you, me and the others that are on wisdom and doing like these, these great talks, we're, we're here trying to get you to trust yourself and have a sense of awe in all that you are because we believe in you, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Having worked in standardized education, I went from being being the authority to right. recognizing how damaging that is. And now all my work is about, look, I am, I am simply a reflection of you. And so if you see me as amazing, then you see yourself as amazing because it's That's really right. you doing everything that you perceive. It's all your perception. It's That's all right. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Across the board. So beautiful. Man, it's always great like sharing a Tao with you, man. Like I'm, I it's it, like so deep, and I, we are we are always so um, aligned with the way that we kind of interpret these. And so I appreciate I appreciate you coming on again. Well, thanks for hosting the Tao. I'll see you next time. Man, ending those things like when the timer runs out, just like it's. Is, 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 that's, that's really nice. That's really nice, Allison. You did a great job. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, all right. Well, I don't have anybody else kind of like in line. So if anybody wants to come up, I will, uh, I will entertain one more, I think, because I got 15 minutes and, you know, uh, 10 o'clock I'll be um, having to move on to some other things. But um, 10 o'clock Central, that's where I am. Central, 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 I think we're in standard time right now. Yeah. No, we're in daylight time. No standard. Yeah, we're in central standard time at the moment. Um, so either way, uh, if anybody wants to come up, pick a number from 1 and 81, I will uh, entertain another DAO if you have one. Otherwise, I'm going to step away and uh, get on with my day. It's been wonderful chatting with all of you. We read uh, 11, 3, and 72. It's, what, it, it's always great to just go through a couple DAOs for the day and just think about think about the the breadth and depth of, uh, of living in a conscious, um, universe that, that, that we are, that we are all a part of. All right. I love you guys. This is a recover yourself production. I'm your host, Martin John. And until next time, keep recovering yourself.